Martin family. So this is Sydney coming at you. I know you're looking at a banana in an old jar right now. You're probably like, what is happening? So I kept promising you that I was going to show you a propagation video, but also that I was going to show you some of my, like, basically the homemade stuff that I make. So I like to make my own banana fertilizer. I do it with eggshells as well. Um, you have to put eggs in water. I already poured all of that out, but I'm getting ready to make the calcium powder. Um, so I'm going to actually show you that process. This is super, it's super basic for the bananas. So you basically just peel a banana, eat the rest of the banana, take the banana peel, put it in a jar, and then let it sit overnight. And then you pour that water into your plants. That's pretty much it. I'm still going to show it to you. Just in case you're like, it can't be that simple. I promise you, it is. And then I will show you the calcium powder and then I'll actually probably end up showing you. These are my old Splendid Spoon uh, smoothie containers. I clean them out so I can propagate plants on them. Um, I have a small like propagation like station set up that my friends got me, but it's very small and these Kaleas like stalks are very thick. So I need something with, you know, a better opening so they can have some air while they sit there and grow their roots. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, it's so my little makeshift setup. Hopefully this will not fall, but just on our kitchen counter, I'm gonna go ahead, literally peel it, the whole thing. Now, I don't know if people recommend like putting that like stem on there, but you know what we're gonna do? Doesn't matter, it's going in the jar. <laughs> It's hard to do this while you're staring at the camera. I just want you to, <laughs> but yeah. And then I'm just gonna eat the rest of the banana after I finish this. Y'all really like this, it's not this easy. It is, and then you put water in it and that's basically it. And then you let it sit overnight. I don't recommend leaving it in longer than that. The smell is going to be super strong when you open it up, which is normal, um, but it is banana peel fertilizer, so. There are a lot of nutrients in banana peels that we don't talk about enough. I'll see if I can pull up a blog or something that um, all you can look at that talks about them or at least just list them in the description. But yeah, so I'm gonna set my banana down because I'm gonna eat that in a second. Fill this in water. I'm not gonna show you that part, that feels silly. But um, fill it with water close it and then I just let it sit overnight on the shelf and pretty much it. it sits next to the compost and then when I'm ready I just go ahead and pour it into all the plants. Okay so now we're staring at the other side of the kitchen um, and this is you know just the oven and everything that don't pay attention to the teapot that's not part of this process. So basically I have my eggshells which these were already sitting in water um, for like you know, you also do those overnight and then you pour the water into the plants for fertilizer that way. Another way you can do this is you boil these for 15 minutes. So you stick all the eggshells and you boil them for 15 minutes. You set the eggs to dry and I have my pan over there that's currently wet because I forgot that I had to boil them for 15 minutes first. I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, so boil for 15 minutes. Set on this, let it dry, make sure your oven is preheated to 225. It doesn't need to be any higher than that. Put on 225 for 20 minutes. You let them bake. Then you take them out, let them cool, and let me see if I can find it. We have a mortar and pestle, a big one that I keep hidden because the only thing I use it for is making calcium powder. But it's a really nice one that I got from, I want to say Home Goods. You know, well, you probably don't know yet, but if you want to know something about me, I love home decor a little too much. So yeah, but this beautiful mortar and pestle right here, um, put the eggshells in it, literally like you sit there and do what those are supposed to do. I do have a tiny one, but I want y'all to see in comparison what this looks like because there's no way you can do this with that one that small. So there's that one, right? This, this is, that's not, 
you're not gonna do anything with that. So you have to make sure that if you're gonna do this, I believe you might be able to probably use something like a food processor too, but I would have to check on that. Uh, I just use Water and Festival the old fashioned way. I turn on like a show or YouTube or anything like that and watch that while I sit there and make the calcium powder. And it ends up looking, cause I've been doing this, I wanna say since last year, it ends up looking and I just used it on jar. We, re we recycle and repurpose here. Um, and I wrote the instructions if I ever forget on the side. And it looks like this when you're done. So it's a really, you'll know when it starts to look like powder because you'll start getting, you see all that, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the smoke that's coming out of there? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty much what's gonna happen when you get it to the just the right um, fineness. And then you see it at the bottom too. You put this in like your tomatoes, your veggies, stuff. It doesn't need a whole lot. You mix it in that soil um, with your water, and that's actually very natural calcium powder. So uh, tomatoes really do love it. I just, me and tomatoes, they're not on my top five. By the time you watch this video, you will see the top five video probably, and they're not my top five. They're not even my honorable mentions because we, we fight all the time. I can't. <laughs> Me and tomatoes are not friends. Maybe when we move into the next place, we will be, but for now, like, I just don't have good luck with them. So, yeah, I'll probably show you, well, I've showed you most of it, but I'll probably show you the step where I go ahead and lay the stuff out to dry. It's, it's really just like you put them in rows and then that's it. So I probably won't show you that because it'll just probably be boring. But yeah, so that's another trick you can use. And now I'm going to show you how I propagate my coleus because as you know they're my number one on my top five. Okay so we're staring at the gorgeous coleus and what I'm doing is I'm looking and I'm just gonna peel them back and if you can see that there's these little beautiful little buds so I'm gonna keep going that's like reusing random stuff in here until I can find like a pretty bare spot like maybe right around here You'll probably go a little bit longer, go down here. I don't know if these will grow back um, in winter, but I'm going to cut it here. I'll look for buggies. So I'm gonna look for buggies, but I don't see any. I'm gonna shake it a little bit just to make sure. But yeah, so if you can see that, there are all these little tiny itty bitty buds everywhere. I love cool It's Like, look at that. Then it was actually, if you look, it was this color. This like pinky, like almost like the watermelon one, just not as vibrant in the middle. And uh, like to, for it to like, bloom this well this is the second year this is the same plant from last year um it's just it's amazing to me so yeah i'm gonna stick this one in my splendid spoon container i love them they are so fun to work with and if i wanted to i can like oh well that's not gonna work if i have these on so i can like pick the leaves off if you're like oh my gosh you're killing the plant this plant will be fine trust me i did this last year and if you can see it has little like buds anyway it doesn't want to focus on the buds there we go little buds anyway so it'll be okay and you just stick it in here if I wanted it to go further down of course I could pick off more of the leaves and everything what I might do is save some of these leaves for the compost inside and yeah you just stick them in I'm gonna put water in there and then I'll pretty much be it I'm trying to decide if I want to propagate more of the same plant or uh, the other ones, but I just, I did four of these, uh, this particular Calais last year, and I am just obsessed with them, so it's probably going to be four again, um, and it's funny because not all of them survived, I think, I'd end up cutting a bunch, but yeah, and I'm mostly looking for, that one looks like it has something on it, so I was trying to get it off without having to touch it. <laughs>
We're just looking to see if there's anything living here. Try not to disturb anything that's living. So I'm gonna get it nice and can't really see that well. There we go. And there we go, there's another one. Again, I'm gonna pluck off all these leaves. Again, this does not, trust me, this will not kill this plant. This plant will come back better than ever. And honestly, they're so they're just so easy to grow. Like if you're really like, I don't know what plant to grow, I'm telling you, with the vibrant of the leaves, the fact that they get flowers on them is like beautiful little purple. I don't know if you can see them. Let me tilt the camera a little bit. <laughs> That's what happens when you try to tilt it on a phone tripod. <laughs> those beautiful little purple flowers over there, they get those purple flowers. And I'm just obsessed. But you can see that like these have been protecting all of these babies down here. I didn't even know that these had sprouted up that much <laughs> underneath these big fluffy leaves. So I'm kind of obsessed with that. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to keep them over here. I might actually be able to plant these in another pot in order to get them started for next year and let them do their thing, which I have no problem doing because Again, obsessed. Let's see. And honestly, like, not a whole lot likes to live on here. I've actually never had a problem with pests on these plants. Which I find interesting because they're so beautiful and the hummingbirds love them and stuff. But I also like this really green color, so I might take one of these. Because it's a younger... Um, plant. I'm going to cut that all the way down. Again, just picking off the leaves off camera. Ooh. Ugh, they're beautiful. So yeah, I will probably do some of the other varieties next. I don't know where all these plants are going to sit at, but that's a problem for future me, which is like in like five minutes. <laughs> there are a few additional pieces that I cut off, but it was mostly being like, okay, well, this is obviously going to grow in my other little propagation station, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, I want another long stalk here. These babies will be beautiful. Look at all that. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to find a good spot and clip. And there we go. Like, just look at the color. It's absolutely beautiful, so... Pretty much what I'm doing for November chore is just seeing what's going to give me new life over the winter and the holidays. Probably the best part, and I accidentally broke that one off. <laughs> Probably the best part about this is that, you know, if, like I'll have so many more plants, and if like we have too many, then I can give them away to friends who are like, oh, I've wanted that plant for so long, you know? So that's always fun. Right now I'm picking the leaves off, of course, for compost. <laughs> in the hopes that the cats will not try to uh, take them, so. <laughs> uh, and the other ones. I will show you the propagation station in a second. That part I'm really excited about to see if I get roots like I'm getting on the other one right now, so. Right now these are just going in, and if you can hear that sound, it's going into this plastic pot I bought from the Dollar Tree. Because yes, Dollar Tree actually sells gardening supplies. If you've never been in there to grab some gardening supplies, this is your, uh, advisory that you should probably do that. Don't sleep on Dollar Tree, y'all. It's not okay. <laughs> okay, so what we are looking at is the plastic pot that I put all of those leaves and everything in and then this little propagation station that my friends got me. We do have one little wandering tree plant that I accidentally snapped off who already has a little root. Try to get that back in there. Ah, this is the only problem with trying to get this out. They, like, the roots get, like, stuck, and then I'm, like, fighting to get it back in there. Especially with one hand. I should have put this one in the middle, then. Aha! We're just gonna... There we go. <laughs> so, we have this. So what we're staring out in this gorgeous light is the propagation station. So we have this little wandering dew plant, and if you look from the 
other cuttings I made. We have a bunch of other little ones, so I'm just literally going to stick them in here. And I will have a bunch of other beautiful little babies that will uh, try not to break the roots on that one. That will want to go home and they'll actually end up standing up on their own after a while. Um, hopefully these won't grow too large into a plant, but I want to make sure that I have enough room for all of these. Here we go. There's another one and I think I have one more left. Yep, it's under this leaf. Come on. <laughs> this is what happens when you have to film with one hand because the phone tripod won't stay up and then work with the other. And all these leaves are actually going to go into, oh, we had another one, which is fine. But these are all gonna go into my little compost area behind us. And actually I can probably show you that. It's just a pot, like one of those black, like store-bought pots. And honestly, because Peanut keeps trying to get in here, I'm gonna just put in there the rest of them and I'm kind of just letting it do whatever it wants. Over the winter, I'll probably come out, stir it up some more, maybe throw it in one of the bigger pots that has plants in it right now. A lot of my November chores are gonna end up looking like cutting everything back, seeing what's living. I don't know if anybody knows what this plant is over here. Ignore the bag, but um, I want to say this is some kind of impatient, maybe? I don't think it's Petunia, but it came back to life after I moved it over from being in so much sun. And it's cold and it's still blooming and I am confused, but I'm just gonna let it do whatever it wants. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of this is gonna look like bringing stuff inside or cutting it back or what have you. So yeah, that's pretty much how you propagate. You just look for the nodes and go from there. You choose what you wanna propagate. I will say that watering juice, poleus, and tomatoes actually are really easy to propagate. So something to think about. I'll talk to you later, garden fam. Okay, I know I said this was boring, but this is basically what the eggs look like after you take them out, you let them dry, I need to, like, use your potato to sop up some of that water. But then you stick them in for 20 minutes, and then you crush them up, that's pretty much it. But I wanted to make sure, I told you, like, hey, this is how this pretty much ends, and then it turns into that powder, and that's pretty much it. So I'm about to start making pancakes and Sunday breakfast, but yeah. If you want me to put the recipe down below, I'll actually probably put the recipe because it's Fairly simple, I did not, it's not one of my own, but I don't think I remember who, yeah, I don't remember who I got it from, but yeah, super simple to make. So I will talk to you later, garden fam. Like, share, comment, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. Bye.